We all have a family member we're kind of apprehensive about, but when it's the whole shroud of relatives, it might be a little concerning. Hi, my name is Jessa, and please join me as we look together our top 10 scariest families in history that will give you chills. Oh, and before we begin, in the last video I was in, top 10 evil women from ancient Egypt no one told you in textbooks, I gave you guys a riddle. Did you get it? The riddle was, what thrives when you feed it, but dies when you water it? The answer is, drum roll please, a fire. Your next role will be at the end of this video. Anyways, let's get started. Number 10, Genghis Khan's clan. We know Genghis Khan and his conquest to take over China was no small feat, as it needed the help of his entire clan to help with his takeover. Coming from a small section in Mongolia, they formed together what had been the largest land empire in history. The Mongols always viewed family as the central pillar of society, and Genghis' sons and grandsons extended the empire from the western shores to the Black Sea to the Pacific. And although they seem outnumbered, their military tactics and psychological warfare were noted in constant success against their enemies. If the city and people they plundered surrendered, the Mongols would then treat them fairly and allow them to join in their bounty, but if the people resisted, they would feel the fury of the Khan clan. Despite the brutal acts of destruction, the Khan clan, whomever they inevitably conquered, the lands were actually safe and well controlled, and in many cases even improved from previous conditions. Subjects had personal liberty and had the rights to follow whatever religion they believed in without prejudice. Number 9, the Briley brothers. One of our sibling duos who had no problem committing crimes together starts with the Brilly brothers. In 1971, 16-year-old Linwood Brilly shot and killed his 57-year-old neighbor, landing him in reform school. This violent episode was a taste of what was to come. From March to October 1979, Linwood and his brother James and Anthony embarked on a bloody hit spree in Richmond, Virginia. With accomplices dunk with accomplices Duncan Meckins, they robbed and killed at least 11 people. Two would-be victims would escape unharmed and they were able to report to authorities of the terrible crimes they saw commit. The brothers continued to leave a trail of terror throughout Richmond and after they were caught, Linwood and James were sentenced to death. In, in 1984, the two elder brothers escaped death row with four other inmates but were recaptured within three weeks. Linwood and James were executed by electric chair in 1984 and 1985 respectfully, and Anthony Brilly and Duncan Meekins are both still incarcerated. Number 8, Cray Twins In some parts of the world, having twins was considered a rare commodity, and in 1933, during a time where having children, let alone twins, was a prized rarity. Their mother, Violet Ann Lee Cray, was particularly given a slight celebrity status when her twin boys not only survived in their infancy, but also were able to survive in towards adulthood. Their mother, Violet Annie Lee Cray, was particularly given a slight celebrity status when her twin boys not only survived in infancy, but also were able to both be able to survive towards adulthood. Some might even speculate their mother planted seeds of malignant narcissism the twins would later display as adults. Born Ronnie and Reggie Cray were noted as one of the most dangerous twins in London. The twins formed an organized crime gang called The Firm, and these, ga and these gangsters were particularly active in London, England in the 60s. They were so dangerous due to their massive extortion rackets, armed robbery, arson protection rackets, gambling, and cold-blooded killings of rival gang members. That's when they were arrested on May 8, 1968. Ronnie ended up being filed as a certified insane person and was committed to a hospital. As for his brother Reggie was released from prison on compassionate grounds, both died five years apart from the other. Number seven, the Gonzalez sisters. The four Gonzalez sisters ran a successful business from 1945 until the police closed it down in 1964. So what was the business? Adult work. Rancho El Angela was a brothel in the Mexican state of Guanajuato and, and acted as the center of the sisters' large-scale adult work network. The women who worked for the sisters often did not so voluntarily. The Gonzalez sisters, well the Gonzalez family, had kidnapped some while others answered advertisements for housemaids. When the women arrived to the brothel, the sister would often force and inject illegal substances on those who, would re who were reluctant to provide the services that the sisters demanded. When the girls became unable to or reluctant to work and satisfy their clients, the sisters then killed them. If a client turned up with a lot of money, he too might end up dead and his cash stolen. When police raided the property, they found the bodies of 80 women, 11 men, and various fetuses. Ugh. There were probably many more victims who remained undiscovered, and the Mexican court sentenced the sisters to 40 years in prison. Guinness World Records even even named them the most prolific murder partnership ever. Number six, the Harp Brothers. Here's another pair of siblings for you, the Harp Brothers. Mecca Jai and Willie terrorized settlers in the remote, sparsely populated territory west of the Appalachian Mountains immediately after the American Revolution. The brothers had stayed loyal to the British crown during the struggle and may have decided that they had better moved west after the American victory. They survived by robbing and killing the settlers who were beginning to cultivate the area and appeared to have thoroughly enjoyed the killing part. It wasn't long, of course, before the vigilantes started to bring the brothers to justice as Mekajai died of his wounds and when a posse caught up with them in 1799, Willie escaped but the authorities captured and had him sent to the gallows in 1804. They were considered America's first serial killers of this time. 
Number five, the bloody benders. Running an Airbnb seems like a lot of work, especially when you're trying to make sure your guests and yourself are happy with the accommodations. You got your nice bed and breakfast, and oh, of course, a nice dinner where the host comes up from behind you and smash you in the head with a sledgehammer. Oh wait, no, that's not a good idea, actually. Uh, yeah. In 1870s, travelers headed west on the Great Osage Trail may find themselves in a cabin made by the Bender family in Labette County, Kansas. And eventually, they would find themselves dead and gone by the family's unexplainable reasons to commit crimes. To be honest, officials still don't know why the crimes were done the way they did. They actually suspected robbery, but most of these travelers weren't even wealthy. Maybe in some sadistic manner, the families just felt like it. But either way, before the locals got suspicious, this family disappeared around the same time another family called the Kellys surprisingly were new in town. Number four, the Borgias. Originally from Spain, this family became so important in the 15th century political and religious world. Ambition and hunger for yet more power, the family included two popes. Lucrezia is probably the best remembered member of the family as she was the daughter of Pope Alexander, and her family was perfectly happy to use her as a pawn in their power plays. She entered into several arranged marriages, each one helping the Borgias extend their grip. Kind of like in the movie Get Out by Jordan Peele where they use Rose to get their new vessels for whatever it was that they were doing. Hmm. Contemporaries often portrayed the extended family as ruthless, a family that would stop at nothing in pursuit of its own ends, and by the time the Alexander Papacy ended, people suspected them of adultery, theft, bribery, and breeding, and morally injuring people. Whether or not these situations were true, historians do suspect it might have been conspiracies made by jealous rivals. Number three, the Bean Clan. Spoiler alert, if you watch Attack on Titan, you might know the scene where Hanji had two titans in her custody named Swanee and Bean. Well, those names were actually based on a real family, the Bean family, and their head, Swanee. Although his name is actually Alexander Bean, him and his wife in the 16th century set up a nice little home and abode in a cave by the countryside of Scotland. In their little sea cavern, they produced up to 45 children who were also some a produce of inbreeding. And by that point, they figured they couldn't just hunt for omega-3s by the seas, they needed to resort by some other ways to provide excellent nutrients, so they began tricking, trapping, and kidnapping travelers and dipping them into homemade ranch dressing. That's right, they ate people, and they survived by eating people. The clan only operated at night, and when they returned home to their little caves is where they could eat the roasted man or woman. The locals didn't know this was a thing, and for 25 years, the clan survived and ate up to a thousand people. The family was tracked down by authorities and all died under their custody. The tale of the Bean clan only appeared in a Newgate calendar in the 18th century, and its publications always highlighted awful crimes to educate its readers. However, this was the same type of publication that had the same notoriety as a fake news forum. Number two, Fred and Rose West. Ever see someone at the bus stop and thought they were really cute, but also thought, hey, you know what? They be a great accomplice for a lot of crime. And that's what happened to Fred and Rose West. The two serial killers met at a bus stop and somehow created a relationship with one another. From 1971 to 1987, the couple would sought out female victims in Gloucestershire, England, and after tormenting and eventually slaying the victims, they would bury them in their cellar. Earning the name the House of Horrors among the many victims was actually Fred's daughter. By 1994, the law finally caught up with the couple and Rose was convicted up to 10 of the crimes and sentences to life in prison. Meanwhile, her cohort, Fred, took his own life before he could be convicted. When he did die, he did confess to 30 of the victims he tormented, which unfortunately might be even speculating that there was probably more victims left undiscovered. Number one, Sackler family. The Sackler family is an American family who owned the pharmaceutical company and have faced lawsuits regarding overprescriptions of addictive pharmaceutical drugs, including Oxycontin. Purdue Pharma has been criticized for its role in the opioid epidemic in the United States, and they have been described as the most evil family in America and the worst drug dealers in history. They're often cited as early pioneers in medication techniques, which, which ended the common practice of lobotomies, and were also regarded as the first to fight for racial integration of blood banks. In 1996, Burdu Pharma introduced Oxycontin, a reformulated version of Oxycodone, in a slow release form. Oxycodone was first invented in 1916 and sold as Eucodal, but had been withdrawn from the market in 1990 due to addiction issues. Hmm. Despite them putting out their good deeds through donations by multiple Ivy League schools and art foundations, they're also noted for their money laundering and, of course, the opioid lawsuits. According to the New Yorker, Purdue Pharma played a special role in the opioid crisis because the company was the first to set out in the 1990s to persuade the American medical establishment that strong opioids should be much more widely prescribed and that physicians' long-standing fears about the addictive nature of such drugs were overblown. Yeah, okay. Purdue Pharma was dissolved on September 1st, 2021. The Sacklers agreed to pay $4.5 billion over nine years with most of that money funding addiction treatment, as they should. If you guys know any other scary or evil families, let me know in the comments. I tried to find as many as I could, but hey, c'est la vie. What was your favorite on the list? Did you learn anything interesting today? Let me know. Oh yeah. 
your next riddle. Are you ready? What can you catch but never throw? Be sure to put your answer in the comments below and I'll reveal the answer in the next video. Top 10 Salem ghost stories that will leave you disturbed. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jessa. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see your beautiful faces in the next one. Bye!